Chapter 8.5, The Polar Equations of Conics. This will correspond with learning target 9.4. We're going to be looking at eccentricity again. We looked very briefly at it with parabolas, ellipses, and hyperbolas, but now we're going to look at it much more in depth. We're going to be writing polar equations for conics, analyzing polar equations for conics, and going back and looking at orbits and we're going to look at the approach to conics used by astronomers. We've got a new definition, an expanded definition of a conic section. Any conic section is a set of all points in a plane whose distance from the focus and the directrix have a constant ratio. So looking more specifically at that, we've got a point on the conic section, the focus and the distance the point of the directrix closest to P, then we have a ratio that E equals PF over PD. And it'll be much easier to see from a picture. I like pictures. So here's a, the geometric structure of a conic section. We have a basic conic section here. It could be a hyperbola, parabola, part of an ellipse. It's got the vertex. It's got the focus. It's got our directrix. The eccentricity, which is our E, is the ratio of the distance from the focus to any point on the line and the distance of that point to the directrix, to the closest point on the directrix. That's the eccentricity, basically how oval, how round is your conic section. So taking our E equals PF over PD, we can solve that for PF, and we get PF equals E times PD. And we're going to use that a little bit later. So now you can see where it comes from. Looking at conic sections in the polar plane. So here we have our focus at the pole, which in the polar plane is your origin. It's the pole. We have the distance from the focus to any point that becomes the radius, our r. Here we have theta, and our x value here is r cosine theta. You thought you were done with trigonometry, but really you're not. So here's our x, r cosine theta. The radius from the focus to the conic section is r. And the distance from th that point to the directrix is the y value minus the x value. So if you imagine we're here at the focus, if we draw a line straight up here, so the, the point straight up is our y value, and the distance that we get from this point here over to our p is the x value, which is r cosine theta, and here we have the distance from P to the directrix is the y value minus the x value, k minus r cosine theta. PF is our radius. PD, PD is the k minus r cosine theta, the y value minus the x value. And our equation from before, PF equals the eccentricity times PD. Solving in, PF is R. So put in R for PF. There's our E. And our PD is K minus R cosine theta. We have two R's in our equation here, R and R. So if we solve for R, we get R equals K which is the y value times the eccentricity divided by 1 plus cosine theta. We'll be using that equation. So there are three types of conics for r equals ke divided by 1 plus e cosine theta. If the ratio of the distance from the point on the conic to or the one focus, 
divided by the distance from the point to the directrix is less than 1, we'll get an ellipse. If the distance from the focus to the point is the same as the distance from the point to the directrix, that's a parabola. And remember, a parabola, that's the definition of a parabola. The set of all points that are equidistant from the focus to and, and the directrix. So if it equals 1, it's a parabola. And if it's greater than 1, it, it is a hyperbola. So we have four standard orientations of a conic in the polar plane. All of them have the KE on the top. KE, 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 KE. And the only thing that changes is the cosine or sine. So the cosine is going along the, the x-axis. And the sine is going to be going up and down along the y-axis. If we have a plus cosine theta, we're opening to the left. If we have a minus e times cosine theta, we open to the right. Plus e sine theta, open down. And minus e sine theta opens up. So these are opposite of what we've been doing before with cosine, the positive opening to the right, and the negative opening to the left, and the negative going down and the positive going up. All right, let's put all this to use. We're going to write a polar equation of conics. If we're given that the focus is at the pole, which would be the origin, write a polar equation for the conic with eccentricity 4 fifths and a directrix x equals 3. We want to start off with our equation r equals ke over 1 plus e cosine theta. e is 4 fifth, k is 3. So we'll put the e and the k in the numerator and the e in the denominator. And we'll get 3 times 4 fifths over 1 plus 4 fifths cosine theta. Multiplying th through, taking care of those fractions, and we end up with 12 divided by 5 plus cosine theta. Try working that out yourself with the uh, fractions there and prove it to yourself. Now let's look at identifying conics from their polar equation. If you're given a polar equation, what kind of conic does it make? So we want to say, what is the ex eccentricity? What type of conic is it? And what's the directrix of this equation, r equals 6? divided by 3 plus 2 cosine theta. And all the equations, we want a 1 plus something times cosine theta. So we want to divide through by the, the number here so that we'll end up with a 1. So we're going to divide the numerator and the denominator by 3. So 6 divided by 3 is 2. 3 divided by 3 is 1. And 2 divided by 3 is 2 thirds cosine theta. So that means the eccentricity is 2 thirds, which is less than 1. That means the conic is an ellipse. The numerator is ke. Ke is 2. And 2 is 2 thirds times k. That's the e, e times k, 2 thirds times k. So 2 equals 2 thirds times k, so k has to be equal to 3. And if k is 3, the directrix is y equals 3. So there we have the type of conic. It's an ellipse. The eccentricity is 2 thirds. And the directrix is y equals 3. Let's analyze the conic section given by the equation r equals 18 divided by 3 plus 6 cosine theta. We want to look at what is e, a, b, and c. Except I don't think we're going to get that far in our, our figurings. But 
we'll we'll take a look at it. So the first thing we want to do, we want it we want a one here, so we're going to divide through by three. So we get 18 divided by 3 is 6, 3 divided by 3 is 1, 6 divided by 3 is 2. So we have 6 divided by 1 plus 2 cosine theta. It tells us the eccentricity is 2. 2 is greater than 1, so therefore it is a hyperbola. That's as far as we're going to take these for right now. Looking at the semi-major axes and the eccentricity of the planets, if you look at the eccentricity of these, all of these are less than 1 for their eccentricity, so therefore all of them are ellipses, and some of the ellipses are rounder than others. And what we're going to be doing in class is analyzing the eccentricity of the various planets. And this is the formula we'll be using to do that. And just for fun, solving a proportion in your grammar class. See you in class.